welcome. Episode two, everyone. We made it. Yeah. It's a special episode. Very special. But not just any special episode. Tonight, it's especially special. As you can tell by my current attire slash state of mind, I am terrifying. That's right, everyone. It's a very special Halloween episode of Stormwatch. Can you guess my costume? Ray Rice. Because he's a barbarian? <laughs> Knock that one out the park. Uh, it's not just any especially special Halloween episode of Stormwatch. It's an especially super special episode. We got a very scrumptiously special ghost of a guest on the show today. Literally, I'm going to communicate with a ghost later in the show, so stay tuned. Please. We don't get many views, so if you leave, I'll feel especially sad, and Adam can't go back to being sad all the time. Eh. Anyways, you know what I love about Halloween? The tricks and the treats. Which brings me to a little segment on Stormwatch that I like to call Haiku Reviews. Haiku Reviews, Haiku Reviews, five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables again. That's how you do Haiku Reviews. Trick or treat is neat, as long as you get good stuff. No one wants raisins. Almond joys are dumb. Coconut is not for some. At least give me dots. Why do some people not hand out freaking candy? Screw diabetes. Haku reviews, haku reviews. That's how you do haku reviews. <clears throat> Halloween's not all about tricks and treats, though. It's also about treats. Ugh, sorry. That's, that's bad writing. Anyways, you can't be too careful when walking around dressed as your favorite princess taking free candy. I mean, I mean prince. Prince, I meant to say prince, because I'm a, I'm a man, and I dress as a prince. Anyways, let's take a look at what happens when candy goes wrong. Oh, um, Tanner Thompson, beloved student at the Milwaukee Area Technical College, is the latest victim of a mysterious illness that's been plaguing the downtown campus. Tanner was taken to Columbia St. Mary's after collapsing in class two weeks ago but doctors have been unable to determine the cause of the disease. His condition is now critical. Tanner's case prompted the mayor's office to contact the CDC. A specialist was sent down to the campus to investigate. But before he arrived, we got the chance to speak with one of his fellow classmates, Amanda Roslansky. So Tanner was sick all afternoon. Um, he was telling me that he had some candy this morning. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, how does one get sick from candy? Seriously. Amanda escorted the CDC agent to the bowl where the questionable candy was found. The specialist ran some tests on the suspicious sweets and discovered that they were toxic. The agent asked Tanner if he knew where the candy came from, and even in his weakened state, he found the strength to confirm the culinary department. Upon interviewing culinary students, it was learned that the killer candy was a result of a recipe gone wrong. We learned from the agent that the CDC will be sending additional specialists to the school to confiscate the candy and quarantine all who may have consumed it. <coughs> As the story develops, we'll be sure to bring you additional details. From MTC Stormwatch, this is Daniel Fisher. Godspeed. are changing color and falling off the trees and there's a chill in the air which means Halloween is right around the corner. Halloween means parties, costumes and of course treats and that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be learning how to make uh, candy apples at home and I have my friend here helping me who has decided to dress up like a dog for a Halloween and she's already got her costume on. Doesn't she look great? This is Layla. So let's get started. First you'll need apples. Try to get the kind without wax otherwise just wash them thoroughly when you get home. Then you'll need caramels and wooden skewers or sticks. And you can always add extra toppings if you like. Okay, so the first step is to melt your caramel and you can use whatever kind of caramel you like. We have the caramel bits here and we're gonna use those. You can also use individually wrapped caramels, just remember to take the wrappers off. And there are two ways to melt the caramels. You can either use a microwave or if you have one, use a slow cooker and you're just gonna put the bowl, a glass bowl, right inside the slow cooker. Keep the heat on high. And that's what we're gonna do right now.
If you do choose to add drizzled chocolate to your candy apple, you can melt it right alongside the caramel in your slow cooker. The next step you want to take while your caramel is melting is to put the sticks in the apples. And it's pretty easy, you just want to put the apples in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes just to harden them up a little bit and then pull out the stems. Just like that. And you want to take the stick and stick it in the apple. Pretty simple. Just like that. Once your caramel and any other toppings that need to be melted are done, you can carefully remove them from the slow cooker. So once your caramel is melted, all you want to do is just take your apple and sort of roll it around in the caramel here and get it all over there just so that it's covered as much as you can. And feel free to take a spoon and put some of it on there if you need to. And just make sure it's covered as much as you can get on there. And then you can add whatever toppings you like. We have um, some crushed nuts here, some crushed up candy bars, and some chocolate that we can drizzle on there. So you can just add whatever you personally like to your candy apple and make it how you like. And we can put some candy bits on there and drizzle some chocolate. And then to let them dry, you just want to sit them on a pan with a piece of parchment paper right on top so it doesn't get stuck to the pan. And once they're dry and ready, you can enjoy. Okay guys, that's it. That's all you need to know for how to make at home candy apples. I hope you guys had fun. I know Layla did. Uh, we'll see you guys around and have a very happy Halloween. Say bye Layla. Ah, candy apples. The best way to trick a kid into eating something relatively healthy on Halloween. Anyways, welcome back. I'm still Adam Lilly and I haven't gotten fired yet, which is a great sign, but Give it time, give it time. I'm sure it's coming. Like I mentioned before, I'll be summoning the afterlife later on in the show. So if you haven't died of boredom or fallen asleep with your TV on just yet, stay focused because I'm terrified and I can't do it alone. You know who else can't do it alone? The restaurant and bakery program. Let's see what's going on over there, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack Kessner, chef instructor at Cuisine Restaurant at METC downtown campus. And Cuisine Restaurant is a restaurant where students actually in their last semester of school, um, it's part of their classroom and they actually they run a real restaurant. The students for their final exam, they have to prepare a four course dinner for um, chefs that actually come in from around the city. We have visiting chefs come in and the students prepare the food and then present it to the chefs and then the chefs evaluate it and then we'll sit down with the students and kind of evaluate kind of what was good about it and what could be improved on it. So Cuisine Restaurant is really kind of a showcase for the culinary and baking programs. Um, all the food that we serve here is baked by the students and here it's the culinary students and then like the desserts and some of the breads are made from our sister program, the, the baking program. And they make artisan breads, um, all the cakes, desserts that we serve and actually there's some of the show pieces around the dining room. Um, and it, they have a, very, a similar program with the Sixth Street Cafe where the baking students actually run like a mini cafe where they can actually interact with customers, handle money, um, but also you know, talk with the customers and get the feedback. The Sixth Street Cafe is a great opportunity for the students to learn customer service. It's a student-run restaurant that's open to the public Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We're located on the first floor of the main building, directly across the hall from the Cuisine Fine Dining restaurant. We serve breakfast and lunch. Breakfast starts at nine and goes until 11. And lunch starts at 11.30 and goes until one. The Cuisine Restaurant will reopen November 4th. We're open Tuesday through Thursday, 11.15 to 12.15. If you'd like to make a reservation, you can do so at opentable.com cuisine restaurant or you can call us at 297-6697 and the students would be happy to serve you. Halloween is just around the corner and that means people are thinking about sweets and baked goods. And who better to make some of this delicious food than MATC's very own baking and culinary arts program. Uh, the baking and pastry program here at MATC consists of a two-year associate degree into which we give a thorough understanding of all the aspects that a pastry chef is going to need in the baking industry. 
But what exactly is taught to the students that participate in MATC's courses? And what do students have to know before they graduate and transfer over to the industry? The classes that I currently teach now, I teach baking for culinarians, is where we also teach chefs how to bake because we, it is on the culinary side, but our chefs do need to know how to bake when they get in the industry just in case they have to step in for the pastry chef and it's a basic skill knowledge MATC wants to enhance into culinary students. While not limited to only baking in school, the program even shared what kinds of Halloween treats they enjoy making in their own spare time. Um, Halloween treats, yeah, you know, a little more, uh, you know, cookies, lighter things like that. I definitely get more into the fall desserts, I'd say with like pies and um, spiced breads and things like that. The students also shared what they enjoy the most about being in the Baking and Culinary Arts program. Um, the most thing I enjoy is like how well-rounded you become because they teach you from the very basics to the classicals, to the high-end stuff, to contemporary desserts and plated desserts. You get a little of everything in the program. Um, it's been about 10 years in the making that I wanted to do it. Um, I've been in the restaurant world for about 12 years and knowing how that works just kind of gave me an interest in what the kitchen aspect is like. Interested in joining the program? Here's some advice. If people want to join the program, I say get in it full, full head because you get in it full time, you're in every program, you move with the entire program with a class, and everyone in your class helps each other grow individually and as a group, so I say join if you really have a passion for it. I think students wanting to come from this area or the surrounding area, local area or near here, need to realize MATC has as much to offer as any technical or advanced college there you have it. The Baking and Culinary Arts program is a very prestigious program at MATC's downtown campus. And if you're thinking about becoming a chef, this may be the place for you. Oh, sorry. Those last few packages made me quite hungry. Thought I'd give this a try. It's good to know we have a fine dining establishment right downstairs in M Building. You know, I'm a very fine guy, and I love to take a girl out to a fine restaurant on the rare occasion. And what better place to do it than at Cuisine? It's just, uh, it's too bad no one said yes yet. <laughs> Get together. Sorry. Anyways, the community always comes together for Halloween, except for the occasional old codger who turns the lights off and pretends they're not home because they forgot to buy candy. Anyways, let's take a look at what METC does for our community. MATC does not only do great things for myself, but it does great things for the community. MATC does not only help the community get educated, it helps us with life experience. And when we have this life experience, we know better decisions in what we need to do. And when we're passionate about something we love, we achieve great things. And achieving happiness is what we need to do and have for our community. We are nurses who are here to help nurture you when you fall ill. We are electricians who keep the city shining bright. We are firefighters who are here to save lives from fires and keep the smoke out of the sky. We are photographers who are here to capture our beautiful world. MATC is covered in the community. How can someone pass up the opportunity to be educated. All together, Milwaukee and the surrounding communities can be filled with educated citizens. Come to MATC and find the career path you're interested in. Expand your horizon. Learn something new. I'm in the TV production and I'm learning how to become a better director, a producer, and a teammate. I'm loving it and I'm grateful for every opportunity I have. Come on up with me. Learn. Brighten your horizon. MATC. MATC may not be the biggest school in the area, but we sure do our part. It's nice to know that we have a strong presence in our own community. Speaking of community, let's take a gander at what's going on during this very scary week at MATC with our Stormwatch billboard. Conversation for the cure on the 29th at the West Dallas campus. The graduation application deadline is on the 31st, as well as the murder mystery dinner at Clemmer's. 
located at 10401 West Oklahoma Avenue. And what's this? Local student gets scared to death. Wait, what? I'm going to have to look into that last one. If it hasn't happened yet, how is it on our billboard? I don't know. Let's check out some footage from the MATC security system here and see what's going on. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. Has the party started yet? Yeah, I got held up at class. I know, I know, I've been late every day this week, but I'm gonna be there as quick as I can. And like I said before, this instructor, he keeps us late all the time. He's a real All right, I'll see you soon. Bye. Jesus! Oh, that was that was some scary stuff. Anyways, you came back just in time. I was about to um, summon a ghost. All right, let's give this a try. Espiritu sanctu necreptu ghosts. Whoa! Ah, ah. Oh, jeez, man, that's scary. Who are you, dude? What the hell? What do you mean? Who am I? I'm a ghost, man. You summoned me. Oh, that's right. I just did that with the Latin uh, and the... Duh. Oh, okay. Hey, you got a minute to be interviewed or I'm doing a TV show Man, here. I got an eternity, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he does. You know? Because he's dead. <laughs> get it? <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Can I ask you a few questions then? I mean, I guess, you know, I was in the middle of, uh, you know, hanging out with Biggie and Tupac about to attend a Michael Jackson and Elvis concert. They're, you know, performing tonight. And I was wanted to, you know, head over to the Ghost Country Club and hit a few holes and you know uh, but I guess I can call my boys my ghost buddies and you know cancel my ghost tea time if you insist on asking me some questions yeah I insist thank oh, you okay thank you. all right man only for you first questions I always wonder about ghosts and their origin stories they always mm -hmm. seem to be interesting so how did how did you die and become a ghost well I overdosed on some mollies you know I was partying one night you know I was um, <laughs> drinking and popping pills and doing a uh, ecstasy, smoking the kush, the loud, or whatever the kids call it nowadays, and uh, I pretty much uh, got so high that I thought I could fly. And I went to my balcony, and I uh, just said, hey, what the heck? Just decided to step off, and could you believe I didn't fly? Wait, are you- I didn't fly. Could you, you believe fly. it? didn't fly. How disappointing was that? Usually humans can fly, right? That's what I assume. <laughs> That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> wow. So what you a lie we've been told. You were doing all these uh, hard drugs and mm -hmm. doing a lot of dangerous stuff. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you are you Amy Whitehouse? Come on, man. You see this? All right. <laughs> Come on, really? 
All right, so oh, you're not sorry. Amy Winehouse. You're sorry. obviously a male ghost. Oh, yeah, definitely. Did um, Oh, man. When you did oh, die, man. though, did you go to heaven or hell? Actually, to be honest with you, I really didn't go anywhere. I've just been here the whole time. I don't know if it's some kind oh, of so like you stayed on Earth. purgatory type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been here just, you know, spying on people. I've even been watching you a little bit. I mean... There's not much to see there. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't really... I'm quite a boring uh, person. I kind of like to erase some of those memories, but, you know, I, I have. Sorry. Hey. Sorry, man. Some guys, uh, you know, like to go out to bars and drink. Some guys like to uh, sit in or stay in and watch golf and eat Rice Krispies. That's, Some like to dance in front me. of the mirror to Miley Cyrus. So. That was that was oh. once, and I never oh, yeah, did it again. Yeah. Well, I don't want to. Just put that you know, it was just yeah. the song was on. It was catchy. Come yeah, on. yeah, sure, sure, whatever you say, man. All yeah. right, let's move on because this is getting a little too personal. Uh huh. Yeah. So you like to spy on folks. What other than that? What's mostly your chicks. I, I love. But there's one perk of well, being a yeah. ghost. I can go yeah. through walls. But the only thing is, you know, I can, I can, I can look, but I can't touch. Oh, I man. can't go to third base. Do you get, do you get boo balls? I do. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, I do actually. It's a very sensitive topic. I, I prefer if you didn't talk about it. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. No. Hey, oh, that, no. <laughs> So, okay. Uh, it's, it's a bad time of year for me, all right? All these costumes, all these girls walking around trick-or-treating and these parties and stuff like that. It's just a real hard time of year, man. everyone, yeah. Come on. Okay, so other than spying on women and doing all that other creepy stuff, mm. what's, your, what's your other favorite ghostly power? <sighs> well, there's just so many. There really is. Um, I like to turn lights on and off. I like to give kids wedgies when they're walking home from school. Um, you know, I like to, um, go into the girls, oh, I already said that, <laughs> I forgot, but, um, well, um, I mean, that's pretty much it, man, you know, I, I like to just so watch people, you don't, you know? for me, it'd be the flying, so you know I mean, what, that, fly? you know what, I, the flying is overrated, believe it or not, as a human, I wanted to fly, and that's how I ended up getting here, but, you know, it's overrated, so I kind of just, I'm kind of lonely, to be honest with you. Oh man, I need some company. That's a bummer. I mean, you, you join just me? no. You just said you're going to hang out with Biggie and Come Tupac. Oh man, and all them. hey, those guys are stuck up. The prima donnas, you know, they, they, they thought, so oh, you I'm need some, I'm you need some real rapper, people. Man. You need I'm some honest, rapper. honest, uh, you know, salt I'm, of the earth types, eh? Yeah, I do. I mean, these uh, guys, the, the head is bigger than heaven, you know. I mean, Something I don't. Clouds. I don't want to join you because I, I prefer to be alive. Hey, uh, being alive is overrated. Trust no, me. No, it's, it's just. Rated just perfectly. Hey, listen to me. It's overrated. I've been there. I've been where you are. All right. Come so on over to the side. So I want to get this question in real quick. Um, what's your favorite favorite ghost theme movie? Well, definitely don't think it's Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, I'm actually offended by that movie. Yeah. I, I prefer if you didn't mention it again. Actually. Sorry. Okay. I, um, actually, my favorite producer movie. Producer told me that was a touchy subject. Yeah. Uh, Freddy's a pedophile, so I don't really like him very much. Um, Jason, I don't know what he's supposed to be, if he's supposed well, to be Those aren't ghosts. Um, I'm talking about ghosts. Like Freddy is Poltergeist, ghost. man. Poltergeist? Poltergeist, yeah. yeah that's, I hung out with some of those guys. They know how to party. So, I, you know, I give it... There's some good guys. So, yeah, I guess I guess you could say those those are some of my... Uh, those would be some of my favorite movies. Because those guys, there's some good guys in, in that movie. Some good spirits. Speaking of Poltergeist, yeah. how, do you, how do you upgrade to better, better monsters? Like, near uh, ghosts. But poltergeists and like specters mm -hmm. and ghouls, mm -hmm. those are like high end ghosts. Right. How do mm -hmm. you get to that level? I guess you got to put in your work. You got to start from the bottom. Start another, started from the bottom, now we're here. So you, you know, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to work your way up. I've only been a ghost for about five years, I think. Really? And you haven't moved up a little bit? Um, yeah, man. That's I, I guess. Bad. No, I, you, it can you believe it? I haven't even met God yet. I yeah, haven't met I him. I wouldn't, because you, yeah, I mean, your ghost, guy is, he obviously doesn't want you the there. The guy's too good That's for why me. he keeps you here. He's too good for me. Well, yeah, of course he is. He's, Just like Big N Tupac. He's, he's God. Just like Big N Tupac, man. I mean, can you believe it? He's guys, man. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's really, I need some company, man. I, I can't, I can't drink beer, you know. I can't, you know, have relations with these girls that I'm spying on. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but... You know, I can't I'm do not going to join you. You should just stop trying to... I just watch other people having fun. 
all the people that are alive, all you live people. I just watch you guys have fun, and you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm lonely. I think, you, I think I'm you're lonely. just being too much. I'm lonely, too, man. Too stuck up, man. Come on, man. Me? Get, okay, that's. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry yeah. for your loss. Sorry for being dead and all that. But. Hey, you know, it happens. Yeah. Ish oh. happens, man. Wow. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Crazy, scary stuff here on Stormwatch. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought a ghost in living aura? Here am I, generic. Boo! <laughs> okay, oh, buddy, that was, just, that was terrible. Just, just hey, awesome. hey, come on, man. I just want to see if I had it. That brings us to my next frightening segment. You can at least show. pretend to be afraid, the man. The close. I'm closing here. Yes, I said it. The close. That's what this is. It's ending to a scary show. I want to thank my guest, the ghost of Ray Rice's career, mm -hmm. for appearing on my show today. Oh, yeah. I hope we have a chance to see each other real soon. Oh, we'll be seeing a lot of each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird. That can only mean good things in my future. No. Sorry. Anyways, I'm Smadam Schmilly, and we'll see you next week. Stay away from the Almond Joys this weekend. No one likes Almond Joys. Good night, and happy haunts, everyone.